And what are we going to do? Intersection. Intersection. Intersection? Intersection. Okay, we are on intersection. So at this point, we have a very different map. You don't... When was the last time we saw intersection in a tournament? It's quite common. I've always seen the matchmaker, so I, I think it exists. Oh, no, 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 no. In the matchmaker, it's very common. It's a, it's a very popular map. It has been for years. I'm just thinking in tournaments. It hasn't been showing up in the tournament pools as much. So the player yeah. should be quite used to it, but still. In a tournament, that's kind of new. Yeah. Also, this is game one, so we do have potentially one more game after... Well, we have one more game after this, potentially two more, depending on how this goes. And... That, yes, I'm ready. Oh, darn it. <clears throat> so, we have... We have probably... I'm thinking Rover Cloaky, the way things have been going. I feel like that's going to be the way people go here. Or maybe Cloaky Air. They're not going to try and rush a grizzly. This is Norphelius. <laughs> True. I mean, it would be kind of cool, but I don't think it's going to happen. I do think that we're going to see, like I said, Rover, Cloaky, or maybe Air. And again, then again, you're the only one who actually went for Air at all. I mean, it worked, but still. Not super common. So, hmm. Man, this is going to be interesting. So this map, for those of you, I mean, I'm sure everyone's familiar with it. You have the northeast corner and the southwest corner. You haven't got all that much besides, but, man, it's, it is one of those maps where it's a matter of either splitting it in half or if one team takes both corners, then it's over. But then it's also highly defensible in the main base, so it may not be as over as it looks. Yeah, try and take a corner. Having a corner is good. Having both is probably the game. Hmm. So, I expect both teams are going to go for one corner each, and probably going to really come down to who ends up being the more important corner. Like, who ends up getting the corner and then managing to hold on to it, if they both go for the same one especially. Which I kind of feel like they will. Anyway, at this point, we are basically just waiting for them to... Oh, it's going. Let's get going. We have San okay, so Amphib, actually. Oh, you might have a point about that, Grizz that Grizzly's rush. We have Amphib coming out with Cloakie over to the northwest for Anir and Saniac. Gota and Kingstead, on the other hand, I haven't quite found what they're going to do, but it looks like... Gota might be going for airplanes. They are talking about it. They probably don't want to place fully so that they actually get a bit of setup time. Well, as long as they don't place commander, they're fine, but yeah. Yeah. Of course, they're going for a proxy factory. At any rate, Anir and... Oh, I see. Okay, so go for the old air rush into, into switch. Hmm. That's kind of difficult these days. I mean, 800 metal well, no, factory. 2v2, it's, 2v2, it's oh, you're right. good. Yeah. Even oh, that's it's true only also. more expensive than it used to be. Actually, that's true. And also, you are dealing with another factory that is ground. So you are forcing your opponents to split their defense. And you still have a lot of options to split your attack. Yeah, well, if we watch and they make 200, sorry, 800 metal of AA, then the factory is almost paid for itself in a sense. That's fair. So I wouldn't be surprised if we did see that. At any rate, though, we do have the match going. The shield bots are actually one of the choices. Shieldbot and Air Factory against Cloaky and Amphib. Already getting the Duck Glaive Rush. So Anir and Saniac, Mumble Clan going in very strong at the start for the harassment. On the other hand, more scouting coming from Golda, getting those Swifts out. Not so much going for the early Thunderbird or early Ravens. Just early Swifts to ping a bit, get some scouting in. Well, Thunderbird is not great with Bandit. It's because Bandit's slow. Ah, uh, has... yeah more survivability than damage. That's a fair point. But Swiss, on the other hand, that means scouting. That means they know exactly what's going on. That means slight harassment. 
And at this point, Mumble Clan is already going to be losing a fair few forces here as they are trying to deal with the bandits coming in. Well, they can just back off. It's more on this map. You're attacking off a ramp to raid the base. So maybe right. they overbuilt, overbuilt the raiders there. Yeah, normally you don't really see a whole lot of success on the attacks on the main base until you get up into the riot skirmisher level. And even then, it's more late in the game, so at that point you got assaults and so forth. This early... But they get to expand mm. behind it. What do you mean? Well, they can expand behind their raiders and they're using a aggressive um, defense. Oh, of course. Yeah, they can do that. They are clearly planning to do that, but they lost a lot of their raiders and now have a massive counter-raid force that could just destroy that entire expansion attempt. Yeah, the ducks were killed by that nifty jumping commander. Yeah, well done, nifty jumping commander with machine gun. And Reconcom is doing its job, but at the same time, it is still a question of whether or not the Glaze can do much, and the answer is no. So overall, Southeast has stabilized quite nicely. Now it's just a matter of whether or not they can get over to the Northeast or to the Southwest, and it looks like the Southwest is the option. We do see Golda heading over there with their commander. So that's clearly their first approach. Although considering that they have a pretty good position with which to deal with the Northeast, it actually could work. And so far, talking about cost earlier, 300 metal worth of gremlins thus far. Factory hasn't quite paid for itself. Yeah, exactly. On top of that, the angler. And they've hmm. they've killed some things with those swifts. Oh yeah, that's true. Oh, and there's an angler coming up. But it's still so far been worth it, and the angler can be spotted on top of that. So overall, yeah, okay. I see it, I see it is working. Of oh, course, Raven, Raven, not so much. Mr. Gremlin, the Gremlin is very, very agile. Oh, okay, that is expected. I mean, I guess it makes sense. They are the counter to air. It kind of makes sense that they'd be able to dodge it well enough when it's trying to bomb them out. Although, I guess that's yeah. sort of the point. I wonder if people are going to use Phoenix more because the Ravens have those issues against the light units like that. Well, they can barely catch Raiders. Raiders, they have to slow down a bit, and then the Raiders get so many shots at them as they try and approach. Mm hmm. Yeah, whereas Phoenix, I mean, darts, it doesn't deal as much damage, but yeah. If thing. you've seen darts against Raven, the darts will just slow them down. Slow oh, them yeah. darts themselves. Well, that's pretty cool, though. I mean, darts haven't had that slow beam for a while, so now they have that. Before, it was less of an issue, but yeah, now... A uh, big force of glaze in the south might actually do something. It might, but the it's getting... A bit open. Yeah, it might. Yeah, the outlaw's yeah, out, out of position. position. Because of that, those glaze can get in, getting around the defenses, and this, these bandits retreating the only things available. The glaze positioning wasn't ideal, but even then, the number of glazes is enough that it's irrelevant. Getting rid of a bunch of wind generators, getting rid of a couple metal extractors on top of that, and possibly getting rid of some of the factories. No, not the factories, just the wind gens. But still, uh, that's putting swifts, southeast. Lots of swifts. Yeah, and that's putting southeast. So with that, southeast is 14 energy, 25 metal. They're way behind in their energy, produ energy production. They can rebuild reasonably quickly, given that on this map, the wind generators are worth a lot. But still, they don't have that resource southeast anymore. Decent metal income, actually, because they took the left for free for that raid. That's true, but the energy income is the real question. And there it is. We have Golda building up the wind generators. Those will easily be able to bring back the energy production. All that they need is something to add a little bit of build power. But right now, that's the yeah, rebuilding. The That'll be the thing. Minimum is 1.1 compared to 0.6. So the corners are actually quite good for economy. Oh, they're amazing for that. Of course, as so long as you keep them alive. But at this point, Golda is doing a pretty decent job defending it. They don't have to worry about air coming at them either. Not for now, anyway. And the Swiss can easily deal with that, too. So, right now, other than size possibly coming in, there isn't a whole lot that's immediately present that would make that Southwest hard to hold. And the Northeast hasn't been taken, either. So, Mumble Clan doesn't uh, even really have an economic base. Southeast has very few... Uh, very few, you know, very small army. All they really have are the Swifts, mm -hmm. holding up Raiders. Yeah, a few bandits here and there taking out a couple of metal extractors, but that's about it. Those, that's not an army, that's just a guerrilla force. Still, though, the economy they have, it's not bad. They don't have as much reclaim, but they do have a fairly good static economy. If they're able to use that to, to turn into an army, they could theoretically take the northeast, and then from there, leverage that into the win. Yeah, they have to really get on it, though. Oh, also, Gorda's energy. I really kind of wish this energy, one of these wind generators, was a little bit closer to the metal extractor. 
Just for that sweet overdrive. Sweet extra metal per second on overdrive. But alas, well, they're not really ever producing energy, so... Oh, that's true. That's not relevant yet. But eventually it's it will be. It's not relevant yet. Oh, and actually, Shieldbot Factory... There's the switch! So, wait. Shield for... Okay. Double Shieldbot. Got shield bots, but maybe, maybe got it as how Kingstead's doing it. Or something like that. Maybe. Or maybe, maybe they're just considering... Strategy. Yeah, that or maybe they're planning on doing something where they're sending in units from that flank. Like they figure their opponents don't expect anything coming from that angle. They expect all the shield bots to be coming in from the southeast or from the northeast. They don't expect anything from the southwest sure. and are not shield set up for that. Shield bots do synergize with themselves. Yeah. Thug law balls are the key example of that. But still, it's, I don't know, it's kind of tricky to hold that off. I mean, the Lotus is going to be torn apart by these Ronin if they're not careful. But they are careful. No, the Swifts, Swifts are there. Good. The Swifts are there. So it's no big deal. And at the same time, Southeast is holding on to that south, that Northeast expansion. Kingstead holding on to it well enough. There's that army I was talking about earlier, and now that is a massive economic lead. And with the two shield bot factories available, well, more so, the, the economy available to make the shields work, this is turning into what could very well clearly be a round one win. At least, and here in Saniac Mumble Clan, they're operating on the back foot. I do notice they're starting to take the center, though. They are trying. Grizzly's coming up as well. Halfway done. Now, one minute, though. That's not necessarily enough. A lot of ducks coming in here. Only one warrior at all. That's the only thing stopping bandits. them is one warrior. But the one... It will oh, stop bandits, them. right. It's, they're running up hills, so they're slowed. Yeah, the sorry. I, more range. I misidentified the unit. You got a very good point. I don't know how I misidentified... Wow, how am I... How am I still awake right now? <laughs> this is clearly not good. But at any rate, Bandits do manage to get some mileage, manage to break all the forward expansions, meaning that there's really nothing Mumble Clan has outside of their main base. And with all the air forces that are coming up for Southeast, they can easily break what's in the main base on top of that. Bright side, though, the Grizzly should be done in time. They may kill this commander. No, not enough Ravens. No, but the Swiss are going to go for it. Yeah, they morphed armor against the air. Smart move. Bandits might take though. I the bandits oh, will definitely the bandits take it. Come from the left. Yeah, see what I mean? The bandits coming from the left because that is the construction. That is where the shieldbot factory is for. Uh, that's what I figured Golden was going for, and that was that worked. They did not well, take the shields from that side. Bandits. But they held it off. Those are Kingstads? Oh no. No, those are anyway. Golden. Those are Golden. They they were built on that factory that we're talking about early on in the southwest corner. So yeah, yeah, the well middle done. ones were, the left ones were not. Yeah, the, the left ones were... Oh yeah, the ones inside the base. Yeah, the ones inside the base, no, but the ones that were damaging the commander. Anyway, the point is, well done by Southeast, had a massive metal lead the entire time, had an army value lead pretty much the entire time as well, just kept Mumble Clan totally contained. Although a lot of that was Swifts, which, were, which oh. did quite well. Mo almost all that was Swifts, especially early on. There was nothing else that was stopping Mumble Clan from doing anything. Just the Swifts were providing all that pressure, and that gave Golden and Kingstead the room to expand behind it. So now, on to Game 2, which is going to be interesting, because Game 2... I don't know what map is going to be on. They're choosing a map from the list. Shimmer? Oh, oh, okay, they want to choose Shimmer Shore again. I feel confident on this one. All right, Shimmer Shore it is. Oh, let's see what they try and start. Because I'm curious. I mean, yeah, also, King's Eye pointed out the games have been quite short. And yes, they have been quite short. But they've been good games. Nothing's really dragged out. But anyway, Shimmer Shore here, when I mean, we saw earlier already with Mackie and Orphelius against... And here in Saniac, and here in Saniac, like that double ship strategy and know how to push it. But I feel like Golden and Kingstead, they know how to do what you were talking about earlier, using another factor, using Hover, in Golden's case most likely, or possibly using Amphib, and then combining that with ships for better effect. Yeah. I was expecting more Thunderbird and Raven, but no, it was all Swifts. Just just fe defeating the, um, the raiding there. That's all they needed. I mean, like you said before, there's not a whole lot that's going to be coming in there. When you think about it, there's not a whole lot that's going to be coming in there 
like you said, for support with the bandits. Like the bandits might come in, but they're kind of slow, and so the opponents can just run away with the disarmed units. So I kind of get yeah, why they exactly. didn't go for that. So who's going to think that they know how to play C this time? <laughs> I think in Urinsaniac, they did pick this map. They did. Yep. So they're clearly the cocky ones here. And Ian knows how to make the ship factory. Saniac also knows how to make the ship factory. I'm curious if they're going to make anything else. And nope, double ships they go! And are Golden and Kingstab, they're doing that as well. But They like to talk. Oh, they are saying double ships. Maybe. And I mean, Aquanim, as Aquanim's still doing a lot of the ship redesign stuff, right? Um. Well, he hasn't done it in a while, but he's still watching what they do. Right, okay. I'm not convinced that double ship is the best. Hmm. Well, I mean, maybe we'll see Kingston and Golda counter that. We do have one ship for Golda, who I was expecting to go for Hover, if anyone's going to go for anything other than double ship. And no, it is double ship all around. All ships, all day. Nothing but ships. Kingston. Ah, so ducks. Ducks are quite good. Ducks are quite good, but nope, all ships. I guess everyone figures that things move too slowly on this map if they're not ships. Which is why I thought hover would be a thing, because daggers move fast. I don't know. Yeah, daggers are perhaps a bit less good. They're sort of like slightly worse hunters, which can go on land, which is a thing. Fair point. And this map, it doesn't really matter if you can go on land, especially since the sides... I'm not sure how vehicle pathable those are. I don't think the cliffs that are north and south of them are vehicle pathable. I think just the, the northwest, southeast bridges onto that from the shallows. Like the place where it connects from the shallows, that's vehicle pathable. Everything else, I'm not sure. But at this I think point, if you look at the, the islands, the cliffs are not. Yeah, that's what They've I mean. They've got different colors on the cliffs. Well, at any rate, it is going to be opening engagement kind of in favor of Mumble Clan a little bit. Kind of. Forcing Northeast Cutter out lost of position. Units? No, not yet. It's just forcing the Cutter out of position, which is going to make this fight a lot easier, allowing the Corsair to basically rip apart. Well, rip apart. What Northeast hat? No, Northeast actually managing to make that work. Never mind. Northeast getting a lot more mileage than I thought. But still, the opening engagement does go in favor of Mumble Clan ultimately. Just barely, though. And hey, there's a Sea Wolf. We finally get to see a Sea Wolf, admittedly, with the Hunters and no, not a whole lot of cutter support. Some cutter support, not much. But it looks like the cutter over to the south side of the map is pretty much just being used to maintain presence in case any expansions are built. So anything, of course, being the Sea Wolf, that'll stop the Corsair. That'll give the Reclaim over to the northeast side, as that Corsair cannot get away in time. Yeah, this is where the Sea Wolf's really good. I mean, we were talking Kill about the it before. And everything else dies. Yeah, Sea Wolf Cutter. This is exact composition that we wanted to see in the previous map, in the previous match on Shimmer Shore, and we are seeing it now, and it is, it is finding some mileage. They both lost the same, the same amount of metal, seven hundred each. Oh yeah. With the Reclaim in the top right. Although, the reclaim in the top right hasn't been taken yet. I mean, if we look, we see that there's actually a slight economic lead for Mumble Clan just because of that reclaim. They've been reclaiming this at the rocks on the south. Ah, oh, no. right. No, wait. Yeah, no. that's just reclaim. Yeah, no, 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 no. But still. Temporary. Still, though, Mumble Clan, they're, they're on top for income. They're not quite on top for anything else. And in terms of tar army value, though, they are on top by 500 metal. So they do have the stronger army, but I don't know that they have the best composition. They're still going for the Hunter Corsair. And if it weren't for the fact that there's only one cutter, I could see that working really well, but there's only one cutter. So that's where the North problem lies. is mostly Seawolf, but they do have plenty of hunters. You probably usually want about two hunters per Seawolf. And that should right. clean them up nicely. And that's exactly what's happening, and that means that Mumble Clan gets even more attrition, but Northeast, they're still winning the attrition, or they were winning the attrition battle, just barely. Uh, responding with some cutters. Yeah, those cutters did do a fairly good job stopping the hunters from really helping. But now, now we have a combined force. Now Northeast is really on this. Now they have the economic advantage. Now they have the reclaim getting going. And that should lead to a much more interesting setup. Unfortunately, though, only one sea wolf. So these cutters and hunters can go down quite quickly if no more sea wolves come up and start helping out. But hey, good start. Getting rid of one of the hunters, forcing the Corsairs back. Providing a little bit of room to maneuver, and more importantly, the south side with the cutters managing to get a fair bit of harassment in as well. 
Oh, look at the middle. They've killed off the hunters and now can just go with the sea wolves. Ooh, even better. At least for Northeast. Mumble Clan doesn't want this to happen, of course. Mumble Clan does want to have the expansion. They do have their expansion in the south working out okay. They managed to urchin away the cutters reasonably well enough. But now these cutters from Kingstad are teaming up with Golda. There's not a whole lot they can do. The Sea Wolves, again, completely stunned out. Everything disarmed out. The Hunters are up, and that does stop the Sea Wolves. That was the one saving grace for that fight, and that does force Kingstad back. At the same time, though, Northeast has taken advantage of that to expand. So, even with that slight loss, even though the attrition is in favor by 400 metal, and the army value is actually 1,000 different, Northeast still has the money to work with. They've almost traded their early armies for expansion. Both sides are expanding quite well. <laughs> yeah, but at this point, it looks like Mumble Clan might actually find the, the room they need. There's not a whole lot stopping these cutters from doing their job. The urchin is trying, but it's completely disarmed. Now it's allowing everything else to get in. The combined force of hunters and, and cutters not really finding any resistance. Hunters coming in from Kingstown and Golda doing what they can, but there's no sea wolves, there's no Corsairs. Corsairs are really would be favorite right now. But even then, that's fine. Enough hunters are there, enough urchins are there, that the Corsairs do go down. Yeah. And in the back, there are the flanking Corsairs. That's what they need to finish off the army. And that is going to be Kingstown and Golda maintaining their position. Not managing to push forward too much, but they maintain the position. They have the metal advantage, and they also are not accessing. Mumble Clan, on the other hand, is having a bit of trouble maintaining their build power in the current economic situation. Yeah, they're doing quite well economy. They also have their claim. Most of the battles are happening on their side. That's true. That is helping a lot. This last battle, however, did happen on the northeast side, and I think that's going to be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Considering the Mistral's up on top of that, making it even harder for these Corsairs to get in and do the damage, it's it could very well just turn into a major push for northeast that then turns into a win. Oh, but on the other hand, the Sea Wolf coming in for a near, that's still an option. That's still opening things up. The hunters are there to stop the sea wolf. The sea the cutters hunters. are there. Oh, they pick it off. Just barely. Very close run thing, but the Corsair is still in the game. Of course, it's still alive. It has Mariner next to it. It could repair it if it wanted to. And I would recommend doing that. But more importantly, the reclaim has been secured. All these reclaim fields giving Northeast a 50 metal per second income, and for the most part, a 20 metal per second income lead. So this is where it can snowball. And I seriously don't see why it won't snowball. There's oh, and the, some reclaim for south. There is some. It's about, let's see, what is it here? It's about 500 metal or so for south. On the other hand, I mean, there's none left for north, but that's because north decided they wanted to reclaim a good 1,500 or so metal from that alone. And actually, north is taking a lot of the stuff in the center as well, so right now... A lot of this metal being taken. It's another 200 or so metal for them. It's another few seconds at plus 15. Another few seconds at 57 total. And more importantly, that's more ships that allows them to even win, win even more fights. Especially with that Mistral there. If that Mistral stays up, I think they've got these cutters dead to rights. On the other hand, though, uh, it might be a problem. Be like rogue, mm, yeah, it's kind of inaccurate, I suppose. But even then, the force is trying to come in from Saniac. Not quite doing well enough. The Sea Wolf, however, is the uh, real threat. North is quite low on Hunters. North is low on Hunters. They have managed to rebuild a few, but those Cutters are still causing a problem. And while the while the Kingstead Cutters, are, or Gota Cutters, are coming in and managing to help a bit, it's still not necessarily enough. The Sea Wolves are managing to find the damage in the meantime, but the Hunters have been able to do their job. The opening is there. The Hunters can destroy Saniac subs. And while Anir are trying to come in with some Corsairs to get rid of a few of these Mariners, they have done their job. That is damaging the economy some, but they have done their job. And now it's just a matter of finishing off these Corsairs. And just clear, constant pushing, and more importantly, harassment over to the south side of the map. The Corsairs getting in there for Kingstad, breaking what is in the south side of the map. Oh, and look at the bottom right. No yeah, exactly. There. Although the subs ran away. I don't know what was, that was about. Yeah. And then so, coming back in. On top of that, on top of the south side, I mean, the subs, they're pulling away, but Mumble Clan is now behind 20 metal per second in static economy alone, let alone reclaim. Yeah, they're trying to get the reclaim in the center, but don't have much. They've got a siren coming up. Siren could go well against these cutters. Depends really on what you support it with. Yeah, it's just a matter of what support they have left. 
because they have some they have cutters and that's it and the cutters have been going down so quickly that's i'm not sure how worth it is i want to consider the mistral the pack of mistrals there as well i'm not sure how much value that is going to be especially now that the cutters are so out of position and being destroyed by the opponent's cutters it doesn't look promising for mumble clan even with the siren Although, to be fair, the Siren does have a lot of disarm potential, or does have a lot of disarm buffer. But yeah. this surround here, just look at the way the ships are coming in here. I mean, the flank over in the southeast, gonna get rid of the Seawolves and Cutters before the Siren's even relevant. I Meaning the Siren has no support forces for a north flank coming in from Gota to get rid of the Siren directly with all these Cutters to disable it, which they might manage, no, they are gonna manage to succeed in doing. Two volleys in, that Siren is down, another Siren is up, but that's fine, this army is split. Saniac is not able to support a near siren, and a near siren is not able to do anything torn apart, having killed basically nothing. And the siren to the south, a near second siren, again going to get disarmed just the same as the first, and that will be setting up for likely game. I, yeah, they're going to throw in the towel after this point. This siren is the only thing keeping them in the game psychologically. And the army values doubled, over double. Oh, yeah, 50 to 80 to 2400. I mean, even after this fight, it's now tripled after this fight. And that is exactly right. Anir throwing in the towel after losing the Siren. That is Gota and Kingstad taking the entire tournament. Well done to you. Anir and Saniac, congratulations on second place. And Mackie and Rafelius, good job on third. Also, good job yeah, on fourth, Google Frog. Interesting C game. Oh, thank yep. you, yeah. Interesting C game here. Yeah, we saw a lot of very careful play. We didn't see sirens being built until the very end of the game. We saw the hunters and cutters being pulled out there. We saw that seawolf cutter combo you were talking about earlier. We saw nice counter coming in from Anir and Saniac, where they did go for the Corsair supported by the hunters to make sure that they can get rid of both the cutters and the seawolves. Really just came down to micro at that point. And they were slightly out microed by Northeast, but it was really close. And there were a few times where Mumble Clan looked that they had it. It just, once the Mistrals came out and they weren't really dealt with, it became yeah, this gradual grind. Claim. Yeah, and the control of the reclaim. It became a gradual grind that Mumble Clan didn't have much to counter. You know, reclaims were important here because it falls to the sea floor, so things don't crush it. It's oh, more often right. full value. Wait, what do you mean things don't crush it? If it's falling to the sea floor, why would it be crushed? Exactly. Don't crush it. Oh, I see. Unlike it doesn't matter. It's that shallows. Right, because I'm thinking crushed. I was differentiating the shallows from the deeper ocean, but yeah, overall doesn't get crushed outside of Amphib. Yeah. But that is that. I mean, thank you all for watching. That was a very nice tournament. I'm glad we had it. Thank you, Akin, for hosting it. Thank you guys for playing it. And thank you, Google Frog, for helping me cast in the last couple of matches. But that is going to be it for me tonight. We are... We are done. It is... It is a congratulations time. It's no longer playing time. So, yep. do whatever you do now that the stuff's over. Maybe play more. You can play more. But well, I will I'll be going the rest of the day. Yeah, you do, actually. <laughs> anyway, so thank you all for watching. Thank you for helping me cast. And until next time... Yeah. Until next time, have a good night, everyone.